Today we're going to be discussing the order to cash process in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central, including the sales order process, shipping, invoicing, cash receipts, and AR aging. Hello Dynamics community, I'm Dave from Bond Consulting Services. One of our experts, Lupe, will be discussing the sales functionality and benefits of Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Let's get started. To enter a new sales order, we would go under Sales, Sales Orders, and this will take us to the sales order list of all the open transaction. Now we could click on Plus New, and a new sales order entry window will come up. Under Customers, you could go ahead and start typing the name of the customer or click on the ellipsis here to select the customer needed. Once you select the customer, you could click on the Show More in the General section to see an overview of the customer name and all the default sell to address information. Under the posting date, you could record the date of when it's going to post to the general ledger, and the order date is the date of your transaction, and the due date will automatically calculate based on your customer's payment terms. In the external document number, you could populate the customer's PO number and the default salesperson information will automatically populate as well. If we scroll down to the shipping and billing section, we could go ahead and specify a different ship to location or a custom address if it's a one time shipping. Now, navigating to the line items, now we could begin populating the different items that the customer has ordered. For example, if they ordered a chair. I could go ahead and start typing the number. The system will filter the list and I could go ahead and select it. Select the location code from where we're going to be shipping from and the quantity ordered. The system will automatically calculate the unit price as you can see here and from there the order has been completed. Once the order is ready to continue processing, you can click on release and select the release option. Now, when the order is ready for shipping, we would go back to our line item section and specify the quantity to ship. So if there's any partial shipments, you could update the quantity here before proceeding with the posting. In addition, you could also update the shipping date when this has been sent and now we'll go ahead and update the line items as well. Now the posting date of this transaction could also be updated to reflect the actual date of the shipping of this product. When you're ready to record the shipment we would go into the quantity to ship and populate the actual quantity that has been shipped. We would also go to the shipment date and update the date that we actually shipped it. This will go ahead and update the lines. And then we could also update the posting date to reflect that same date. Once we have updated the dates, we will go under posting, post, and select the ship option. Once we click OK, the system will automatically record the shipment of these products. And we could also go under Navigate Shipments to review the shipments posted. Within the shipment record, we could review the information. And also, if something was done incorrectly, we could also undo the shipment to reprocess. Once the products have been shipped and we're ready to invoice the customer, we could go ahead and update the quantity to invoice if needed. And if everything's correct, we could just go and update our posting date to the date we want for our invoice. And the system will automatically calculate the due date based on the payment terms assigned to this customer, which could be seen under the payment terms code. Once we're ready to post, we're going to select posting post and select the invoice option. 
Once we click OK, the system will go ahead and post the transaction and ask if we want to open that transaction. We can now go ahead and click on Yes, and the posted invoice will come up. Once the transaction is posted, we can no longer edit, but we do have some options to correct or cancel the transaction. Now that the invoice has been posted, we will now go through how to record a customer payment. Under Cash Management, we would select Cash Receipt Journals. Here we could select the batch. In the Cash Receipt Journal, we would enter the date of the payment. Under Document Type, we would select the Payment option. Document Number will automatically populate. And under the external document number, we could use this field to enter the customer's check number or any other identifier. So under account number, we will select the customer that we received the payment from. And then we would go up to process, apply entries. Here we get a list of uh, outstanding invoices. Now we could go ahead and select more and select additional invoices if they paid multiple. In this case, we will just record one transaction and we will go ahead and select process, set applies to ID. In the amount to apply field, we could change the amount that has been received from the customer. So if they send a partial payment, this is where you could change it. In this case, we'll leave it for the full amount and we could go ahead and click OK. Now in the balancing account type field, we would select the bank account and the corresponding bank account code where we would be receiving these funds to. Now you could proceed in adding additional lines as needed to record additional payments. But once you have entered all those payments, we would select post print and post to record these payments. Once we click yes, the system will go ahead and record these payments. Thank you, Lupe, for showcasing the Dynamics 365 capabilities. And thank you, Dynamics community, for your attention. We hope you enjoy this video. Subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more about utilizing Dynamics 365 to grow your business. Click here for our related videos. Utilize our website down below.